Hey, Jody here, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. You know, as I'm saying this right now, I'm, I'm maybe a couple hundred subscribers away from passing the 500,000 subscriber mark. Half a million people have clicked that subscribe button and want to want to see what I have to show each week. And so I want to just say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. I got prepared for you 21 of the best, most useful arc shots that I've done over the past couple of years. There's something here for everybody. There's TIG, MIG, stick, dual shield flux core, some 6G pipe, root passes, you know, walk in the cup, lots of things like that in celebration of 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. Kick back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a beer, enjoy the arc shots and, and video tips. I'll see you here soon with some more fresh content. Thanks for watching. First up are these parts that I did a couple of years ago, just carbon steel parts. They're some type of little balancing lifting device. Welded at 170 amps using 332 filler metal and a number 8 clear ferret cup. Walking the cup is like walking a 55 gallon drum across a shop floor. It's like this, like, like a little series of figure eights almost. And getting a piece of smooth pipe or heavy wall tubing or something like that and chucking it up in a vise or something and just doing this until you get the mo motion down where it feels comfortable is like some of the best practice you can do. There's no point in burning up a bunch of coupons if you're not even at all comfortable with the whole muscle memory and everything of walking the cup. So here I've got a couple of hash marks just with a grinder put in a piece of heavy wall stainless tubing and I'm just running a pass that simulates the cover pass on a piece of pipe. Getting practice on aluminum, one of the best things to do is something I call the aluminum drill. And here I'm using a piece of, of metal that's about 3 16 of an inch thick. First I welded a bead around the edge, then I'm coming back and just stacking beads until I'm tired of stacking beads. Going left-handed, right-handed, trying different things, trying, you know, using smaller filler wire, larger filler wire, faster travel speed, slower travel speed, stacking dimes coarse, stacking them fine. You know, this is where this is where you learn, and there's no better place to learn than on a scrap piece of plate that you're not worried about. So this is a good place to try stuff, and there's more bang for the buck practicing on this thing like this than there is almost any other TIG welding exercise. I recommend it highly, especially when you're first learning. This is a root pass in a 6-inch Schedule 80 pipe. This is a one method it's called lay wire and I, I like to freehand it with a TIG finger and I just move the torch forward and back. Now on smaller diameter pipe a lot of times I will do a dip keyhole technique like this and the way to get some push through on the bottom there you just have to push more wire through than you would normally. You've got to feed that puddle you don't want to starve the puddle on the bottom. You're not going to get it to push through a whole lot using dip keyhole but you can definitely get it above flush. And that's the second pass on that same joint right there. This is a 3 8 thick 3G test plate stick welding. I'm going to run the root pass at 120 amps. And this is about how that goes here. You want to make sure to overlap and chew that edge off like by about an eighth of an inch. This is the finished pass. It's a three pass. I didn't want to show the whole thing here because this is sort of a little collage again of just a bunch of different clips of stuff. But this is a common test. And if you're not accustomed to welding vertical uphill, there's no point in wasting the test plate. Do this first. Stack beads uphill halfway over top of each other until it feels really comfortable. Until you get pretty good at stacking beads, then you'll have a lot better shot at passing that test. MIG welding, there's all kinds of discussion about push versus pull, and a lot of it depends on whether you're doing short circuit transfer or spray transfer. This is short circuit MIG. I did push, I did pull, I tested cut and etched each, each for the uh, to compare penetration. There were minimal differences and that has been my experience. There are subtle differences to push versus pull. Usually push will lay down a little flatter. Usually the pull will get just a little bit deeper penetration but sometimes it goes the other way. In this case it was there was very little difference. Here I'm using O30 wire and I uh, just did both techniques, just a series of little loops I do that a lot on short circuit MIG. Here's an uphill joint. This is thicker material and I like to use a little technique like this, sort of a Christmas tree type thing, a series of triangles where I trace the front of the puddle but then come straight across. 
This is an overhead joint. This is a 4G test plate. Oftentimes this is given in conjunction with the 3G because that gives a all position qualification for a welder. And there's the root pass on that. Having a little trouble with arc blow so I'm really jamming it in there toward the end. This is a 3G short circuit MIG test. This is the second pass on that. And notice that I'm, I'm keeping that wire on the leading edge of the puddle and it looks like it's cutting in pretty good. I'm trying to wind up with a, a, a pass that's just below flush here. Just below flush and I let it cool quite a bit until it's just warm to the touch before I do the cover pass and that allows me to, to uh, make a cover pass that isn't too high. So I pause on the toes, go pretty quick across the middle and that works good for me on 3G vertical uphill MIG. This is using the lift arc TIG here, the second pass on a socket weld walking the cup again. I'm using a technique called lay wire here, although you can dip it in and out of the puddle, but just it's just very convenient just to leave it in the puddle on something like this. And as long as each pass is, is, is cleaned and free from heavy oxides, you typically won't get any problem with lack of fusion on a lay wire like this. Here I'm using a TIG finger to prop and freehand the same type of pass just to show it. You can almost make it look as good as walking the cup, just freehand it, but that thing gets hot. All right, I'm going to do a little scratch start now, and you can do scratch start TIG with most any stick machine. You need this little adapter here. It's called a TIG adapter block 105Z57. You just clamp your stinger onto it and have a tank of argon hooked up, and you're good to go. I'm going to run a root pass in this plate here, and I'm going to use the same technique I showed a minute ago on that pipe to push this root pass through here forward and back, forward and back. And the reason I do a free hand here is it's hard to move forward and back when you're walking the cup. Your progression is just forward. It's hard to back up. And, and plus, I don't like to do any side-to-side -side motion because I like for that thing to poke through. Now, here I am walking the cup just doing very minimal side-to-side -side motion. And we'll come back with a hot pass here. Same machine. The Miller Thunderbolt at about 120 amps, I think, here. And when, you, when you're using scratch start, you got to trail out on the bevel and snap out. I'm at JD's shop here doing a little, little pipe welding. Or JD is, I should say. I'm holding the camera. This is a pipe joint done with a TIG root, scratch start, and then fill and cover pass with dual shield flux core. I was surprised at how quickly he was able to fill up pipe with that dual shield flux core. This is a 3G welding test with dual shield flux core with 045 wire. The root pass going in there is something like this. Just slight, very slight side to side motion. Root pass went in there nice and flat. And this is my buddy, my good friend, Andrew Carden, who, who placed fifth, by the way, at World Skills a few years ago. And he's doing a two pass cover pass here. And it came out pretty darn slick. And while we were there at the Lincoln Training Center near Atlanta, we decided to do a, a 4G also. So this is the root pass on the 4G. Notice the slight drag angle there. It looks like it's almost a push angle here, but camera can kind of be deceiving sometimes. This is a little job that I did. There were 50 of these parts. And part of it I put in a position and just, just walked or wiggled the cup just like this with that rod just staying in the puddle. And because there were so many of them, that just, seems, that just seemed like the way to do this joint here. And it came out pretty darn good there. The other end had this little chamfered uh, piece on there. And I wound up using lay wire with pulse on that. You can see I just propped there with my TIG finger, and you can see how hot that would have got without a TIG finger. This is another, this is the same part, actually. There's just a lot of more little hardware that got welded onto it, and there was so much welding on it, it got really, really hot. And that's a perfect example of where, uh, this is a TIG finger XL. I've got two fingers poked in there, and, uh, you know, it didn't matter how hot it got, I didn't get hot. All right, a two-foot T-joint here. This is the first pass in there, about 115 to 120 amps using that old Miller Thunderbolt. And we'll come across it with a second pass by bumping the amperage up a little bit. And honestly, I think this could have used about 5 or 10 more amps right here. But it was, it was within the ballpark on amperage. This is a 063 1.6 millimeter thick aluminum joint, butt joint. And I'm using this Pyrex cup here because it really helps see everything. Not only while you're filming, it kind of lights the way for an old guy like me to see where he's going. 
This is a number five. I, I also use a number eight like this. I sell the number eights on the website. They work good for a joint like this also. All right, this is just a carbon steel T-joint here. Just showing the, you know, dip technique. Just dipping out of the in and out of the puddle. I, the, for this particular video, I, I also showed uh, pulse versus pulsing with the foot pedal. And here I am walking the cup on a T-joint. This is the second pass there, just to just to kind of get used to it again before I, you know, before I before I made that walk in the cup video. This was the first joint that I did before I tackled the round stuff. And I'll be doing some pipe videos coming up in the future, walking the cup quite a bit. So just to show that you can do the same, almost the same quality, almost the same look without walking the cup, I'm just going to freehand here, but I am using a TIG finger, you know, because this thing is smoking hot. So I'm just going to sort of mimic the motion, just a little Z-weave. And it's not that hard to make it uniform by doing this. And with, with having the, you know, that heat shield on my finger there, it's not a problem even though I'm propping right next to the weld where it's getting really hot. Here's a little close-up of that same shot. Pause just, just momentarily on those edges, just enough to let them fill, and then move on across the middle and try to do it evenly. And that's going to wind up looking almost the same as the walk in the cup one next to it. Maybe not quite as pretty, but, you know, it's hard to tell them apart. So I've got the TIG Finger as well as the TIG Finger XL, and really the main difference is the XL is big enough for most people to slip over two fingers, at least your pinky and the finger next to it, and the regular size TIG Finger will just mainly slip over one finger. One's, the XL is much thicker, and so if you're doing like preheated parts, uh, it really, really comes in handy. 100% sourced and assembled in the USA, made by friends and family. There's your commercial. Appreciate your support. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for the 500K you know, subscribers. I hope to make better and better videos in the future.